you have a phone, chances are you've gotten those robocalls. Right, well, we certainly have here at Fox 5. So at this point, I owe the IRS money, and if I don't pay up, I'm going to be jailed. So, Mom, if you're listening, guess bail me out. The local county sheriffs are going to arrest you for four serious allegations before this matter goes to the courthouse and we freeze your bank accounts and get you arrested. Make sure you give us a call back before you get arrested. Yeah, and that's the second one. Second time I've been offered to be arrested by some random phone call. I have a warrant out for my arrest in Nebraska, although I've never been to Nebraska. You've probably gotten the same calls over the last couple of months. I've gotten them. Most people have gotten them. If they sound familiar, a lot of us get the same calls. Hopefully, Holly, you can help. You know what? I've gotten a few of them. I'd love to tell you what they said, but they were in a different language. I get those. I did get them. Right? Those, yeah. get those. I got numerous calls from the uh, Chinese consulate in New York City yeah. saying that there are problems there. Or just the universal debt collector. Right. I'm a debt collector. Some of those I'm worried might be real, though. Some of those are real. <laughs> okay. Well, some of them are silly, and some of them are threatening, but all of them can make life pretty miserable. So we asked an expert whose company provides phone use data to major U.S. carriers, why are these people calling us, and how do we get them to stop? Threat or foe? Your doctor's office or Scam Central. Sometimes you can't tell until you've picked up the receiver. He will be taken under custody by the local cops as there are four serious allegations pressed on your name at this moment. Of course, the IRS or your college won't call you up and threaten you via recorded message. But some people fall for live or recorded threats and send money to scammers. Fraud is the number one way they're making money. Um, there has been, you know, billions of dollars last year that people have been built out of by these scams. So why do they do it? Easy. To make money by ripping you off. And some of them are also trolling for your private information. You're starting to see that one-third of all calls today are either high-risk calls or nuisance calls, and nuisance calls being robocalls. So high-risk is more spam calls so that are, or fraud calls. So someone like you would think of the IRS um, spam incident where someone was calling from the IRS after you filed your tax return and say, hey, you haven't paid enough. You know, that's kind of a fraudulent call trying to get the consumer to give consumer information. Hi, it's more to avoid spammers these days because robocallers can mimic phone numbers that are already familiar to you. It's called neighborhood spoofing. So what happens is a spoofer will take a number and it'll, it'll use the same area code and then the same next three numbers. So it's called the NPA NXX those first six numbers, you look at it on your phone and you say, wow, that's someone in my neighborhood or that's someone local. That can't be someone who's trying to spoof me, so you, you're more likely to pick up the call. The good news? Your carrier may already be flagging suspicious calls on your screen as possible spam. And large carriers should also be able to help you add your own defenses. So they're not going to block it for you? But it will come across and say, hey, this is most likely a spam call, or this is most likely a good call from that perspective. So they use technology that we've developed to be able to kind of put that reputation on the phone. Mike Keegan tells us that robocalls to the 202 area code topped 658,000 in October alone. That's down from the year-to-date high of nearly 1.2 million calls during July. <laughs> And again, just taking a look at those numbers, they are making some progress. So, I mean, it's still a lot of calls. So you see, you know, over a half million in January. It peaked at that 1.1 million this past July. And now it's back down to 658,000. So, you know, they're doing the best that they can. Um, I don't know whatever happened to the do not call list. Yeah, do you remember right, that? Like, sure. that seems fruitless, that, right? right. Yeah. Um, but anyway, if... If you don't know who, if it doesn't say a name in your contact, I wouldn't answer it. No, <laughs> right. And sometimes you don't want them to know that it's a live phone number anyway. So yeah, it's right. Best to just let it go. Whatever. I get an inordinate away. amount of robocalls from Brandywine, Maryland. Like it always says, Brandywine, Maryland. Isn't right. It? It's strange. It is strange. Anyway. All right. Thanks for the info. You're welcome. Appreciate him. All right, Tucker. Good morning. Now about this warrant in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, well, I've never been there before, so we'll have to uh, wait and see what happens with that one. Uh, maybe maybe just it. don't go though to Nebraska. Yeah, in the exactly. Meantime. Right. Drive around it. Hey, let's do. Uh, the